Shigaraki's return is a lot sooner than we thought, the international heroes finally make it to Japan, and we get introduced to All Might's first disciple. Let's talk about all of this and more as we dive right into the newest chapter of My Hero Academia. So My Hero Academia Chapter 328 is finally out. And with it, we not only get to see just how exactly Stain escaped from Tartarus Prison, but we also get introduced to America's number one hero. And big shocker, it's not Captain Celebrity. <gasps> it's not Captain Celebrity? I know, random voice in the distance, it caught me by surprise too. For those of you who don't know, Captain Celebrity was introduced in the canon My Hero Academia spin-off series, My Hero Academia Vigilantes, as America's number one hero. And he basically just had the powers of Superman. He could fly, travel at super speeds, had super strength, and super endurance. In fact, I'm pretty sure in terms of raw power, he was the closest hero in the world to All Might. So yeah, this new number one hero has got a hell of a lot to live up to. And if she can't, me and my fellow celebra bros, name pending, are gonna be pissed. But before I begin talking about all of the delicious details of this chapter, I'm first going to go into a quick summary of what happened last time. And as usual, don't forget to Detroit smash that like button and slide into that subscribe button's DMs to hit that notification bell. In the last chapter, we saw the boys of class 1A yeet Midoriya's clothes off like they legit yeeted his clothes off. This is the official translation. Get naked and all chill in a hot tub like bros five feet apart because they're not gay. Once they had washed away their sins and were fully cleansed from the toxicity of this fandom, there is no escape they regrouped in their dorm's common area, where they were haunted by the ghost of All Might, who rushed into the room, made amends with his successor, told everyone he had some big news, did a sick kickflip, and then, just like Midoriya's dad after Midoriya was born, yeeted himself out of there as quick as possible. With All Might gone, Midoriya, having no need to be conscious anymore, took a nap, and Shoto reassured everyone that his dad was still hated by a lot of people, which unfortunately means that there are probably people out there who hate him too. Jiro, who was disgusted by the thought that someone out there could possibly possibly hate this sweet cinnamon roll, please don't die, got her band back together, and she and all of Class 1A proclaimed that they would go beyond to not only fix the world, but to make it even better than it was before. And Chapter 327 ended with a cutaway to Chicken Wing, Pant Man and the Flaming Bad Dad, Hawks, Genus, and Endeavor, where we learned that the heroes have one month to prepare for Shigaraki's return. And this is where Chapter 328 picks up. This chapter opens up with a flashback back to the villain's attack on Tartarus Prison, where we see one of the escaping inmates running around excited about the prospect of being free and being able to chase women again. So yeah, this guy is basically your average Discord moderator. Looks like Tartarus really does hold the scum of the earth. However, unfortunately for this inmate, but fortunately for everyone else, his dreams and life are quickly cut short by Stain, who rushes in from around the corner and slits the prisoner's neck open with a sharpened piece of rubble, killing him instantly. After gruesomely killing this dude, Stain then jumps behind a pillar to hide away from a group of his fellow inmates. As Stain is hiding behind cover, it's revealed that no information about the outside world is allowed to pass into Tartarus or into the hands of any of its inmates. So not only do the prisoners have no idea why Tartarus is crumbling, but they also have no idea what has happened or is happening in the outside world. This lack of information angers Stain resulting in him making his way straight to the guard's monitoring room to acquire as much information as possible. Once Stain reaches the room, however, he sees that all of the guards who are stationed within are all dead. All of them except for one, who is crumpled up on the ground alongside the corpses of all of his friends clutching onto something with the last bit of life he has left. Noting that whatever the guard is holding onto must be of importance, Stain goes to take the object from him, but despite being only a few breaths away from death, the guard refuses to let go, and he begs Stain not to let the object, which is revealed to be a recording device, fall into the hands of Shigaraki or his followers. Without saying another word, Stain takes the device and begins to leave, but as he starts to walk away, the guard grabs a nearby gun, points it at Stain, and he starts to beg once again, asking Stain to give the device to a just person. 
person. In hearing this, Stain, who is just outside of the room, turns around and reassures the guard that his determination will be rewarded, and he will indeed fulfill his dying wish. After Stain says this, rubble from the ceiling begins to fall down into the monitoring room, and the room starts to collapse. With only a few mere moments of life left, the guard shouts out one last question to Stain, exclaiming, Akaguro, are you a man or a monster? To which we get this badass shot of Stain, surrounded by falling rubble himself, responding, only those who strive for a completely just world are monsters. Oh, damn! And with this, the story then cuts to outside of Tartarus, where we get this absolutely stunning and horrifying shot of the true king of villainy, all for one, standing upon a hill of debt, destruction and flames, with his now mindless disciple beside him and an army of the world's most dangerous prisoners cheering and bowing before him. It looks so terrifying, but so God damn cool. Stain, in seeing this monstrous image before him, notes how he didn't even know the guard's name, yet with his dying breath, he desperately tried to protect the recording device Stain now has in his possession. So Stain decides that he will respect the man's dying wish and give it to the one person he sees as just, the one person he knows he can trust and the one person who started all of this in the first place. All Might. Once Stain finishes up saying all of this, he dives off the edge of Tartarus Island and begins to swim to the shore, ending the flashback. And following this flashback, the story cuts to the present, where we see All Might and a now tired looking and unshaven Tsukuuchi looking over the record Stain successfully delivered to All Might. It's revealed that after his conversation with Stain, All Might immediately went to Tsukuuchi to drop off the chip with the records. Then, he went to the student's dorms to apologize to Midoriya, and now he has come back to Suguchi to see all of the information they have managed to retrieve from the device. Sansa, Suguchi's assistant, and a cat man informs All Might that the invasion on Tartarus was only possible because All for One connected the consciousness of his real body with Shigaraki's, allowing the two to perform a perfectly synchronized attack that disabled the security system. However, in hearing this explanation, All Might notes that something still doesn't seem right, as he knows from his experience with One For All that the connection between a person's real-world conscience and a conscience that is contained within their quirk only goes one way. And basically, All Might points out that his vestige can get information from the outside world, but the real All Might can't get information from the One For All world. Although there was one exception. When All Might was holding Midoriya's hand in the hospital room, he could vaguely sense what was being discussed inside the quirk. He felt that the synchronization rate had momentarily increased. Going off this idea that the closer you are, the stronger the connection, results in All Might finding it extremely strange that All For One was able to connect and communicate with Shigaraki's body, even though his real body was trapped at a depth of 500 meters below sea level. However, he has no doubt that if All For One did have the capability to communicate this far apart, then he most certainly could send detailed information between the two bodies. Tsukuuchi agrees with this fact, but he also reveals that this is not how they communicated during the attack on Tartarus. As it turns out, the shockwaves the two used to knock out the Tartarus security system contained hidden radio wave messages, and this is actually how they communicated with one another. Tsukuuchi was able to confirm this theory thanks to the files Stain had delivered to All Might, which held the records of the shockwaves the villains used in the attack. From these records, Tsukuuchi and his crew were able to decipher a waveform resembling that of a conversation, which detailed that Shigaraki will be completed in 38 days. In hearing this, Sansa has what I believe 
believe to be the most appropriate reaction to this revelation, I mean just look at his face, as he exclaims that Central Hospital said they were supposed to have a minimum of two months. All Might then chimes in and admits that he doesn't quite understand it either. But for now, he believes that the results of the hospital's research should take a back seat. And then All Might has the tragic realization that if this conversation is in fact telling the truth and calculating the time that has passed since the invasion of Tartarus, Shigaraki's body will be fully completed and in its perfect state in exactly three days. I said it once and I'll say it again, the heroes are so fucked. But after dropping this bombshell, the story cuts away, and we see a building with several different flags around it, which we can assume to be the International Heroes Headquarters. Inside the building, we see some silhouetted figures discussing how it would be unwise to send too many heroes from different countries to Japan, as they are also really needed to keep the existing balance of power in their own countries. However, we learn that Salam and Big Red Dot, two international heroes who appear in the My Hero Academia World Heroes movie, are not happy with their respective country's decision to not send them to help. But as everyone's country's representatives is explaining why they can't send in their top heroes, the American representative chimes in stating that unfortunately he couldn't stop one of his country's heroines from going over, and she took an entire flight Elite with her. And with this, chapter 328 comes to a close, as we see a woman who has her hair suspiciously similar to All Might's standing atop a flying stealth bomber, proclaiming that she couldn't refuse a request from All Might. And she exclaims, My master is in trouble. We can't hesitate any longer. And it's revealed that this heroine's name is Stars and Stripes. And she is is America's number one hero. Oh, baby, is it getting interesting. Overall, this was a really interesting chapter. Seeing Stain's escape from Tartarus was a surprise, but was also great to see. His interaction with the dying guard was oddly somber, and it helped to flesh out the seriousness and conviction behind his character. I'm actually really enjoying Stain's presence in the story, and it just makes me sad that he hasn't been in it more often. He's such a fantastic, interesting and important character, yet he's never in the spotlight for long. He just comes in, fucks shit up, and then leaves. I suppose that is a bit of the charm behind his character though. The revelation that Shigaraki will be complete in three days was very surprising and kind of strange considering it was legit at the very end of the last chapter that we were told it was two months away. I get they wanted to get across the oh my god that's way closer than we thought feeling, but it just seems strange that they would tell us one thing and then immediately corrected in the next chapter. The inclusion of the international heroes you will see in movie 3 was a nice shout out even if it's explaining why these characters won't show up to help out. The big reveal of America's number one hero and that she is not only an All Might lookalike but apparently the symbol of peace is her master was a development I was 100% not expecting. Although having her introduction being her standing heroically atop a fleet of stealth bombers mid-flight was a pretty badass way to introduce her character. I'm really interested to see just what exactly her deal is, and if she actually has a connection to All Might and is some sort of disciple, or if she is just a huge fangirl. But let me know what you think of this chapter. If you like this video, don't forget to leave a like and comment what you think is going to happen next. For more My Hero content, subscribe to the Lunchtime Crew. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Plus Ultra.